In this video, we're going to look at functional composition and the Claisley uh, using Scala and the functional libraries Scala Z and CATS for illustration. Um, to start off with, I've got a, a simple process where we're going to retrieve a number from a database, um, perform some form of processing on the, the value, and then uh, write a result back to the database. And um, we're going to do this using three higher order functions. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, get number from DB, which takes a uh, unit and returns an integer. Uh, we have process number. Uh, obviously, in the real world, you probably would have uh, a little bit more than units, uh, some sort of SQL query or something to, to match on. Uh, process number, uh, we're going to just take an int and return an int. And for writing the response back, uh, we're going to take an int and return a boolean for that uh, to indicate whether or not we were successful. Um, now, since these sort of form a part of a process, um, sort of separately, you would end up combining these. Uh, you could go ahead and just sort of execute these yourself in the code by running one, getting the result, passing it into the next, etc. Um, but what you can also do is you can compose these into a single function uh, that consists of of the parts. Um, so if we just sort of create implementations for these. So in this case, we're always going to be successful. Um, uh, here, simply, we're returning two. Um, here, we're going to double the number. Uh, in fact, I wonder if we can simplify that a little bit. A simple way of composing these is simply to do what you would do normally if you were just um, executing these functions and then combining the results. Um, so the first thing I do is um, let's call this combo. And the combination of these functions is going to be a unit at the very start, uh, when we're getting the number from the DB, it's a unit going in, and the final result is a boolean. So if we're putting these together, that's probably what we want to do. And before I do that, actually, let me take this out and just have the boolean that you would get returned if you just combine these. So we've got val number equals Let's get this number from the database. Pass in nothing. Uh, we're going to have val processed, which is going to be process that number. And let's feed number into it. And then we're also going to have, um, let's call it result. And it's going to be write the number to the database and give it processed. And the last thing to do, of course, is to return result. And then we have these combined, and we're going to get that boolean back. Um, the key thing is that this is being eagerly evaluated at this point. So if instead we want this to be the unit two boolean function that we can call as many times as we want, um, then in this case uh, we're going to delay it by saying this is a function call. So now this is a higher order function. Now we can inline these. So our combo now is our unit to boolean. Which is this? I'm going to check this by having, and we're going to actually call it. So if we don't apply the function, then we're literally we're going to get the, the function itself unapplied. Let's see what we get. Okay, so our result was true, uh, which we would expect since that was hard coded there. Um, but as you can see, that we called the combo and that executed the sequence that we've now built. The problem with this is that it's a little bit hard to read, and there are better ways of doing this composition um, without requiring the nesting. Um, so the standard library actually has uh, some operators that allow us to combine functions, um, and it's really what we're doing here exactly the same. Let's say compose, get rid of those, get rid of the apply, um, and again get rid of this unit too. So I think that's slightly better to read. Um, so we're basically saying uh, write number to db compose, process number compose, get number from db. Works exactly the same way as the compose dot operator from maths. Um, but we are reading from right to left. And I actually prefer a different operator uh, to compose. Um, let's call this combo 2 in the name of originality. 
Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my number. And then I'm going to process that number. And then I'm going to write the number to DB. And these are exactly equivalent. And then execute that. As you can see, I mean, exactly the same response comes out. The next thing to do is to look at uh, another problem that we can run into. Uh, so composing these functions is fine, but the key thing to remember is that you're basically taking a value and feeding it into the input of the next function that you're chaining. So here we have an int out, passing that into the input for the next one, we get an int out, we pass that into the input for the third one and so on. So you do need to get a matching on these. Um, but a quite common issue is that you may actually be using something like a future, uh, skull as a task, a monix task, an io monad, or something like that, to wrap your output in some sort of context for either delayed processing or uh, to indicate that it has side effects, um, these sort of things. So um, if I change the signatures of these to say that, okay, these, these are IO, there is some delay on them, so we don't want them to be necessarily blocking, we want to chain the stuff up. Okay, now the first thing you can see is that this is broken our composition because you can't compose these three functions because the signatures don't match. We have a task of int coming out of the first one and we have an int as the input for the next so you can't actually put these together. There are a number of solutions to this. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flatten up responses because we've got a task of int, we can flatten up over that task and we can get the int out of the context of, of this. Uh, that will actually return us a task of boolean. So then, if we're going to do um, unsafe perform sync on that, then we should get the result out um, once we call the flap. Yeah, that's fine. Boom. Okay, so we we retrieve the number, we process the number, we write the database, and the response we get back was true. Um, so that's very similar to the, the first way that we did it. Only, of course, with the additional stuff of having to to flat map. Um, you can, of course, prettify this a little bit. So we could go ahead and use a for comprehension, uh, which is basically syntactic sugar for what we've just got. So here we're going to have uh, this boolean, uh, but it's inside the context of task because the get number from db returns a task. We are then flat mapping and getting the integer out of that initial response. So the context of this for comp is going to be the task. And so once we yield this result, which is going to be boolean, it's going to get wrapped in the task, which is what's going to get returned. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to comment out the first one. So, first one runs, combo flat like is true, uh, and one here, it's exactly the same thing, true, it's identical. Um, so you can see that using the for comp, exactly the same as using the flat map. However, there is a question mark, a better way, which finally we come to the point of the Kleisley. So a Kleisley is basically a 
uh, kind of like a mono transformer, but for functions. And what it does is, um, let's say you have a function with a signature of uh, int to task of string, then Cliesley will be a Cliesley of task int string. And this is kind of like an alias for this. Bring that in. And make that. Okay. So what the Cliesley provides provides tons of, um, sort of helper functions for these things, but uh, the key takeaway for what I'm going to go through here is that it enables us to abstractly ignore uh, the context um, in the case, in this case, the task context uh, when performing composition of, of functions. So I'm actually going to have so we've got function closely here uh, again. Let's let's match what we've got here. So we've got a unit to a task of boolean. So it's going to be a boolean. This is going to be unit and task wraps the boolean. So it's a unit to a task of boolean. And what I'll do is I'll build this up. So we have get number from db. So I'm going to create a new higher order function. In fact, let's put this inside a def. And we're going to call Cliesley apply and just pass it in. And what this Cliesley will do, it will lift this function into the context of this wrapper. Um, so now we have this Cliesley task unit int from this. Uh, in actual fact, you don't actually have to specifically call the apply here. You can apply it uh, as so. Uh, but the key thing is we should now have our get number from db Cliesley as a result. I'm going to do the next two. So we've got process number. I'm going to lift that into a close line. And we'll write number to db. So we have get number from db close the process number close I should have done that while I had it in the. Well, I do have it in the buffer actually. Um, why is it like this? Oh, because we changed the signature. So now this is uh, an int to a task of int. And this one is an int to a task boolean. And now, what we can do is we can go val uh, combine or combo Cliesley, which is going to be a Cliesley of uh, task unit to boolean. And we're going to combine these, so we're going to have get number from db Cliesley, and then we're going to have process number Cliesley, if I want to do. So you can see we're now back to the, uh, the simpler functional composition, very similar to the standard library, only we've managed to do it uh, within the context of a task or a future or an IO or whatever it may be. Um, and that's the win, really, for, for a Cliesley. All of these liftings that I've done manually were, were mainly just to sort of demonstrate the case. Um, we do actually have an and then k function, which means that it will do the automatic lifting of the function that you provide it. So we start off with a Cliesley here, we're doing an and then k, which lifts process number into a Cliesley and then applies the and then. And again, the and then k does the same thing. This is with scholar z, with cats, and then is overloaded, so you don't need to specify the k. Although, I'm wondering, no. You can, so it's with cats, you just use and then, um, but with scholar z, you need to do and then k. The other thing we can do is we can inline the the lifting here, so we can just lift the first one. Uh, so, which means we can get rid of this. Of course, that's not closely. That's this one. 
Um, and then we've got this Cliasley at the end of it, but we don't actually have our function. Um, so the way that we need to extract that function back out of the Cliasley is by calling run on the Cliasley. Um, so you could do the composition and then call run on it, in which case this signature uh, will change from uh, to a unit to a task of boolean again. Much cleaner, uh, less boilerplate, and it enables you to use these sort of very simple and easy to understand. It's very easy when you're looking at this to read what exactly is going on. Um, so we're seeing that, okay, we're composing these functions um, using the Cliasleys. Um, we don't need to do the four comp, we don't need to do the flat mapping. Um, I do think that, that is much cleaner. <laughs> Better run. And you can see we're getting exactly the same information now. All of the things I've shown here are exactly the same code. We're producing the end result is identical in all these cases. It's just different approaches that you can you can come to. Uh, now one other thing that I will go through with with the Scala Z is uh, Scala Z used to have very, very strange operators for everything. Um, which is great if you want to pretend that you're a magician, you know, get a bit of kudos, be a bit arcane. Um, uh, when cats came along, its approach is to make things much more accessible. Um, so using things like the the and then, it's the same as the the standard library code. Um, <clears throat> again, using and then for this combination uh, as an overloaded function. Um, but what you can do, um, you can still use the sort of arcane operators. There's a fish operator which normally looks like that. Um, this case is incorrect because it's an and then k, which basically is a long fish. Um, and with Scala Z, the and then ones are the fish moves to the right, which is the way that you're reading it. And equally, if you do compose, then it's the other way around. Um, so you can, if you want, happy to do that, you can use the fish operator. Uh, personally, I think that um, use the words there, somewhat easy to read. <laughs>